Alright, we're continuing right off the last episode. If you didn't see that one, just check out Joan Denver's Lone Wolf, episode 1. Should be titled something like that. And let's continue where we left off, with this locked chest. Let's see, what do we do here? To open the lock, you must find the right position for your pick. You can rotate the pick by dragging it to the left or to the right. Okay, why am I reading this? Nobody wants to hear the tutorial. Okay. There we go. Pick locking is very easy in this game. I was expecting a thing to break. You managed to pick the lock, and now the container lies open in front of you. You look inside and find something, some value items that you could prove useful. <laughs> Ooh, bunch of good stuff. Uh, let's just take it all. When you leave the store and return to the main street, a gust of icy wind bites into the exposed flesh of your face, and the sudden chill makes you shiver. The winter sun is completely obscured by thick lit gray clouds. Yeah, you're unable. Yeah, you're able to tell the time of day without its helpful presence. It is nearing midday. Oh, I could have just ended the last episode here. Oh well. Let's meditate. And there we go. Fully rested. Do you want to write your story from here? Why, yes I do. You follow the main street, tense and alert, ever watchful for signs of human life and Giac raiders. Suddenly the door of a nearby building is thrown open and out into the street pour a gain of Giacs, growling and waving their black-blooded black blade weapons above their loathsome heads. You steel yourself for an imminent combat. But your concentration is broken when you glimpse a human among their number. It is a girl, in her late teens, well, with short dark hair and sharp sparkling eyes. Judging from her appearance and her clothing, she does not look like a typical rockstar and villager. Make your choice. Let's not observe her, let's help her. The girl breaks free from the gain of Yax that surround her. She sprints past you and instinctively you move forward and place yourself between her and the pursuing enemy, blocking their path. Um, more of the Giac speak? You shout disdainfully in Giac. While your command of their language leaves a lot to be desired, it is good enough for these Giacs to understand what you have said. Pick on a human your own size. You glance over your shoulder and see the girl. She has stopped momentarily, and for a fleeting second, your eyes meet. In the blink of an eye, she upholsters a small crossbow from beneath her cloak. It is unlike any crossbow you have ever seen before. Ah, so she's really good. Although, where was she hiding it? I, was she hiding it beneath that? Like, okay. She levels the strange crossbow at one of the Giax and sends a steel bolt straight between the creature's hateful eyes. She fires again and another Giax falls dead. Then another. The crossbow is reloading itself as fast as she can fire, so what is it, like automatic? Okay. Quickly she upholsters her weapon. She holsters a weapon and sprints across the street towards the cover and safety of undamaged house on the far side. Die, human, roar the gain of Giax. You spin around and face them as they come rushing towards you with their weapons held ready to cut you down. Fight. Oh, the hand moves when I click. I didn't notice that. Ow. Ow. That's mean. Okay. 
Oh, I gotta do it at the right time. Maybe I should have read that. Uh, let's heal myself. Oh, I did this to them. That was not very useful. Some attacks can- <laughs> okay. Altered status. I think I stunned him, probably. Okay, so click on this. Darn it, now time. Ah, yes, I dodged. Ooh, I counter too. Full heal, darn it. strategic when I fight these guys, but honestly speaking, I've never been too good at this sort of game. Okay, I need to heal. I really need to heal. Ability. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you! <laughs> that could have been very bad. Okay, I just punted him. Well, I don't get to do like the Well, I won. That's something. Very close call at one point. I can't believe I actually almost died this early on. I think I used more throwing knives than that, but okay. <laughs> the girl is nowhere to be seen. You focus your gaze on the houses opposite and detect fresh tracks leading towards the front door of the largest house. It has escaped the fire that has ravaged much of this area, and clearly you can read the ornate sign fixed above the door. Redallion of the Inventor. Stealthily you approach the front door and twist its iron handle. It is locked. Make your choice. I can break it or pick it. Let's pick it. It seems like pick locking is pretty easy in this game. Which 
probably avoid combat, all things considered, because I'm going whips me. Actually, very easy. You hear the click of the lock opening, and you reach for the door handle. One twist and it opens easily, on its well-oiled hinges. Cautiously, you enter the open doorway, and catch your first glimpse of the interior of Verdalian's house. It is furnished with sturdy chairs and tables, all stacked high with blueprints of dimensions, prototype clockwork devices, and tools of all kinds. Your eyes adapt quickly to the dark interior and your ears detect the scurry of female feet, shod in soft leather. I didn't know female feet sounded different than male feet. Maybe lighter or something like that. From out of the shadows, the girl comes running towards you. Who are you? She demands to know. I am the lone wolf. I am your liege lord, you reply, taken aback by her impertinent tone. And who are you? I am Leandra. Jen Raid Aliens is my father. Leandra's voice is tense and irritable. It's as if she resents having to answer your simple question. This is not how the villagers would normally address their liege lord, and you assume she must be in a state of shock. Thank you, my lord, she says, her voice dripping with sarcasm. So gracious of you to visit our humble little village. Such a pity you arrived too late. Far too late. Her harsh words shock you in stunned silence. You're a little unnerved by her disrespect and her belligerence. Relevant matters, or all things considered, you decide to address. <laughs> okay, let's be diplomatic. The girl is clearly upset by the calamity that has befallen her village, her friends, and her family. You soften your expression and try to console her sympathetically. It came as soon as I received word that you were in trouble. I have sent urgent message to the cane, and he will send troops here to deal with the Giax. Of that, you can be sure. The girl nods her head, acknowledging your words of comfort, but she does not say anything in reply. You sense that she is not entirely convinced that you, what you say will come to pass. She goes to the front door and closes it before saying anything more. I guess she doesn't like nobility. The girl goes and stands next to a latticed... What is that word? Ah, uh, latticed window. At the front of the house. Anxiously, she peers into the street beyond. She is fearful that more Giax will arrive soon and try to break into her house. You stand on the other side of the window and try to get to her to talk to you. Together you keep watch from marauding gangs of Gaiox. After a few moments of, of uneasy silence, finally she relents and tells you what has happened in Rockstar. She also tells you something about herself and her uh, famous father. Oh, so he's famous. A large raiding party of Gaiox, supported by Nakarin, attacked the village the day before yesterday, they gained entry into the village by way of a large steam-powered elevator platform. This elevator is used to hoist wagons of Bronin ore and convoy miners to the floor of the sunken forest. Rockstarn was attacked during the day. From this fact, you deduce that the raiders were not focused upon killing the townsfolk, since they launched their attack at a time when the village was least occupied. Many of the villagers were down in the sunken forest when the attack began, either working in the mines or gathering timber. These lucky ones have all since taken refuge in the mines, which may well be the safest, places, safest place to be at the present, certainly the easiest to defend. Unfortunately, the timing of the attack caught the most vulnerable villagers unawares and undefended. You recall the uh, Macabre site that greeted your arrival, and a... Shiver runs down your spine. The armies of the Dark Lords are cruel beyond reason. They delight in murder and mayhem and know no other way. Leandra is unsure about precisely what the raiders came for, but she stayed behind to sabotage the elevator. She acted with the help of Tarlor, the village sheriff. By doing so, she would prevent the Giax from pursuing and killing her kinfolk before they reached the sanctuary in the mines. She has since played cat and mouse with the Gax, constantly moving and hiding to avoid being captured or killed. She tells you that she removed three essential parts of the elevator's mechanism. The compression valve, the drive chain, and the control handle. Guess that's what these are. 
She has one of the parts in her pocket. It is the compression valve. The other two parts are in separate locations in the village. Andrew tells you that Ta Tarlor the Sheriff has the control handle, and that she hid the drive chain in the foundry near the ore smelting works, a large building located close to the cliff edge. Without these parts, the elevator is useless. The Gayak cannot return to the forest floor. They are trapped here. The cliff is steep and sheer, and it's too treacherous to descend by rope. Leandra is anxious to rejoin her father and the others who are now hiding in the mines. Roxanne is far too dangerous a place for her to stay here any longer, but she is sorely aware that the only way down to the forest floor is by using the elevator. To do this, she must have all three of the missing parts so that she can refit them and get the elevator working again. You ask Leandra if she works as her father's assistant. You feel the urge to move on, there's no time to lose. You're impressed by Leandra's skills and you ask her about them. Uh, let's be a little bit more personal. You know of Jen and Raid Alien's work, but you are still puzzled about the girl's role in what you've seen so far. You ask her if she helps her father make his inventions, and she seems mildly offended by your suggestion. Yes, I help my father, but I'm an inventor in my own right, I'll have you know. She flicks back her cloak to reveal her holstered crossbow. I'm a crack shot with this, and you won't find anything like this elsewhere in Summerland. Not even among my father's many inventions. Leandra stares directly into your eyes and says, I am determined to join my father and my people in mine. In the mine. You have come here to pursue the raiders and avenge the destruction they have wrought. Is that not so? If you help me, then I will help you. You are going to need a working elevator to reach the forest floor. Without it, you will not be able to discover the reason for this attack, Leandra says. When the Gax discovered that I had sabotaged the elevator, they were furious. In their blind rage, they vandalized the pump room in the boiler house. I must go there and make g good any damage to the pump and boiler. It's no good replacing the missing parts if there's nothing to power the elevator. And while you're taking care of that, I shall search for the missing parts, you reply. Leandra nods her approval. Remember, she says, Sheriff Tarlor has, c has the control handle, and the drive chain is hidden in the foundry. I had little chance to hide it properly. There were two Geoks chasing me, as I recall. I threw it among some other chains that were lying on the floor. It is very different to those chains. It's smaller and well-oiled. The foundry chains are dry and have much bigger lengths. Very good. This will help me find the parts you apply. Ooh. Something's about to talk, I think. Your immediate tasks are now clear. You must find Sheriff Taylor and retrieve the control handle, and you must go to the foundry to find the drive chain. Hmm. We got boost to intelligence and dexterity. I didn't actually even know there's a level up system in this game. And Blood on the Snow. Chapter 2 is done. The video is a little bit shorter than the last one. But I'll leave you guys here and I should have more out tomorrow. If you like, leave a like, and if you like a lot, then subscribe. Good night.